Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids and how are you? The story this week is from Japan. Japan is a string of islands a bit like a necklace of jewels in East Asia. A lot of Japan is covered with mountains, four-fifths to be precise, and the most famous mountain is Mount Fuji, which is also a volcano. Japan has lots of waterfalls and wildlife, like cranes, which are birds, eagles and monkeys. And the most popular food is rice, fish and vegetables. Some of you might have tasted sushi, which is scrum diddly umptious. Oh, they also have rice cakes in Japan called kibidango. Listen out for them in our story coming up. The story today is a well-known Japanese fairy tale called Momotaro or Peach Boy. But before we begin our story and find out why the main character is called Peach Boy, could you make a list of all the different types of fruit you can think of while we have a quick word with the grown-ups? Oh, and if you're not old enough to write a list, maybe you could draw some pictures of the fruits you can think of. Hello, super great kids. I'm back. How many different types of fruit could you think of? There's so many. There's apples, oranges... Pears, cherries, bananas, grapes, papaya, melons, plums, figs, grapes, pomegranates, kiwi fruit, raspberries, mangoes, pineapples, lemons, tangerines, and cherries. Ooh, and of course, aki fruits, like in Nora and the aki fruit. And there are many more. I wonder how many fruits you got in your list. Now, it's nearly time for our story about Peach Boy, but first, we're going to learn how to say go away ogres in Japanese because the monsters in this story are ogres or onis as they say in Japan. So, are you ready? Oni wa soto. Again. Oni wa soto. And one last time. Go away ogres. Ready? One, two, three. Oni wa soto. Very good. I hope you can remember that because in the Japanese fairy tale we're about to hear, we meet some brutish ogres who will need your help to get rid of. This week's story is told by Tiernan Duyeb, the same storyteller who told you Theseus and the Minotaur and the bear who stole the wind and the laughing prince. Tiernan is a comedian, so his stories always make me laugh. Are you sitting comfortably? Am I sitting comfortably? Here's Tiernan. Mouth open, story jump out. Once upon a time in Japan, there lived an old man and an old woman. Life was good, but there was one sadness. They didn't have any children. Then, one day, the old man went to the mountains to get some wood, while his wife went to the river to wash some clothes. When she came to the river, You'll never guess what she found. A giant peach bobbing in the water. That peach looks delicious, she thought. I'm going to take it home for my husband to eat for his pudding. Her husband was surprised and very pleased. Let's share it, he said, reaching for his knife. But as he began to cut into it, the peach split in two. And would you believe it, out popped a baby. I'm sure God has sent us this baby, said the old woman. Let's raise him as our son. And so they did. They called him Momotaro, which means the peach boy. Momotaro grew up to be brave and strong. But one day he said to his parents, Mum, Dad, there are some terrible ogres living on Oni Island just off the coast, and they're terrorising the local people. I'm going to go and put a stop to it. The old man and the old woman begged him not to go, 
but Momotaro said, I must, I must, I must. And his mum and dad said, You can't, you can't, you can't. And Momotaro said, I must, I must, I must. And his mum and dad said, You can't, you can't, you can't. And you've guessed what Momotaro said, I must, I must, I must. In the end, his mum said, OK, 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 but please be very careful. Here, take some of my kibidango to make you strong. Kibidango are sweet, round rice cakes, and they're very, very tasty. So the little peach boy tied the rice cakes in a little bundle and attached it to his belt, and he set off down the road. He walked and he walked and he walked until one day he met a dog. And the dog stuck his nose in the air and sniffed and began to sing a little song. Momotaro-san, Momotaro-san, could I have some kibidango? I'm very hungry and I really need to eat. So the kind peach boy gave the dog a kibidango and the dog gobbled it down. And Peach Boy said, I'm going to Oni Island to fight the ogres. Will you join me? Now, the dog didn't really want to help. Those ogres sounded really scary, but he was a good dog. As you have helped me, so I will help you, said the dog, hoping that perhaps he could find one of the smaller ogres to fight. So the two of them set off together. They walked and they walked and they walked until one day they met a monkey. Kiki 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 kiki, and the monkey stuck its nose in the air <laughs> and sniffed and began to sing a little song. Can you help me? Mo motaro san, mo motaro san, could I have some kibidango? I'm very hungry and I really need to eat. So the peach boy gave the monkey a kibidango, which it gobbled down. And Peach Boy said, I'm going to Oni Island to fight the ogres. Will you join me? As you have helped me, so I will help you, said the monkey. So the monkey followed the dog, who followed the boy, who was heading for Oni Island just off the coast. They walked and they walked and they walked until they met a pheasant, which is a kind of bird with a very long tail. And the bird flew round Momotaro and started to sing a little song. Can you help me? Momotaro-san, Momotaro-san, could I have some kibidango? I'm very hungry and I really need to eat. So Peach Boy gave the pheasant a kibidango, which it gobbled down. And Peach Boy said, I'm going to Oni Island to fight the ogres. Will you join me? As you have helped me, so I will help you, said the pheasant. So the bird followed the monkey, who followed the dog, who followed the boy, who was heading for Oni Island just off the coast. They walked and they walked and they walked, until at last they came to the sea, where they found a fisherman sitting by his boat, chewing on some grass and looking rather sad. What's wrong? Can we help? asked Momotaro. It's the ogres. They're causing so much trouble that I don't take my boat out anymore, so I can't fish and my family are going hungry. That's why we've come, said Momotaro. We're going to fight the ogres and chase them away. The fisherman was so pleased to hear this that he lent Momotaro his boat. When they got to the island, the dog shouted, I can smell the ogres. And the monkey shouted, I can hear them dancing. And the bird shouted, I can hear them singing. And Momotaro ran towards the sound, but, oh dear, all around the island was a thick stone wall and there was only one way in, and that was by a huge wooden gate, which was guarded by the scariest looking ogres you can imagine. On their heads were two sets of horns, and their eyes were red, and their hair was yellow, and their blue skin was wrinkled like old plums. Kiki, 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 shouted the monkey. I think it's time to go back. Too bad that we can't get over that wall. But the pheasant had a better idea. She picked up a stone in her beak and she flew high, high, high to the top of the wall. 
and then she swooped down near one of the guard ogres and she spat out one of the stones towards guard ogre number one. And meow, splat, it hit him right on the nose. Number one guard looked at number two guard and glared. Why are you throwing stones at me, you ugly great brute? Are you calling me ugly? Have you looked at yourself in the mirror recently? Asked the guard ogre number two. And then the pheasant took another stone in her beak and sneaked up to the top of the wall and spat it out towards guard ogre number two. And meow, splat, it hit him on the forehead. What's the matter with you, he growled. I didn't throw a stone at you and now you're throwing one at me. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. And so the bickering went on until ogre number two had slime drooling out of his mouth and steam coming out of his ears. Just then, the pheasant picked up two more stones and fft, fft, spat each one at the guard ogres. You no good nincompoop, I'll show you, said guard number one, and he flew at guard number two in a rage. Soon they were chasing each other round and round and lashing out, and there was such a gnashing and a spitting and a clawing that before long, both ogres lay flat out on the ground in a smelly heap. Then the pheasant hopped down to the other side of the door, set in the thick wall, and turned the key of the lock in her beak. Momotaro was scared to go in and face all the ogres inside the castle, but he shared out some of his kibidango with his friends, which gave them all strength. And then he strode towards the ogre's castle, followed by dog and monkey. OK, everyone, let's go and teach those ogres a lesson. They found the ogres all singing, drinking and dancing. We're big, we're bad, we're rough and mean. We make people cry and scream. We steal their stuff because we're so tough. We're a big, bad, stealing ogre team. The ogres stopped dancing and singing and stared at Momotaro. Momotaro glared back and cleared his throat. <clears throat> Me and my army have come to fight you, he declared. When the ogres saw his army, a dog and a monkey, they laughed and laughed. The dog barked. Row, row, row. The monkey shouted, Kee, 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 kee. The bird pecked, Caw, 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 caw. And the peach boy shouted, Oni wa soto. But the ogres took no notice. They just walked even closer towards Peach Boy so he could smell their rotting fish breath. So Peach Boy shouted again, even louder. Can you help me? Oni wa soto! Oni wa soto! Suddenly, over Peach Boy's shoulder, the ogres saw the two guards lying on the ground, looking for all the world as if they were dead. All the ogres started to shake. This boy must have magic powers if he can kill both our fiercest guards, they moaned. You see, the most terrible bullies are often not very brave inside. They just use their great size to scare people. Suddenly the pheasant flew up and started pecking at their noses and the dog began snapping at their ankles and the monkey, sitting in a tree above, began to drop pears onto their heads. Run away, run away, screamed the ogres. The boy is using his magic powers to make it rain pears. What will he do next? The ogres ran away howling and they lolloped to the beach and climbed into their ships and sailed away as fast as they could to distant shores and were never, ever seen again. And that is how Momotaro got rid of the ogres on Oni Island. So... Momotaro and his friends won the fight, and when they later explored the castle, they discovered huge piles of stolen gold. We can share this out and we'll never go hungry again, said Peach Boy, running up and down the glittering heaps of coins. But the pheasant sniffed the gold, and the monkey licked it, and the dog bit into it. Ow! It nearly broke my tooth when I tried to eat it. I don't know why you're so excited. This is rubbish food, said the dog. I think this is a trick, said Monkey. You said if we defeated the ogres, you'd share out your kibby dango, but now you're trying to make us eat this horrid, hard, yellow stuff instead. We can't eat it, so it's no good to us. I know, said Pheasant, who is a bit of a peacemaker. I have an idea. Peach Boy, why don't you share out what's left of your kibby dango with us, and you can have all the gold you could eat from this castle. And that's what they did. The animals had plenty of kibidango to give them strength on the long trek home, and Momotaro went back with a large sack of gold over his shoulder from the ogre's castle. 
His mum and dad were very pleased with the treasure, but much more pleased that he was back home from his adventures, alive and safe and sound. And as for Momotaro, the little peach boy, well, as you'd expect, he and his parents lived happily ever after. Or, as they say in Japan, medetashi, medetashi. Thanks to Tiernan for sharing that story with us. Isn't it a great tale? And can you remember how to say, go away, ogres? Oni wa soto. Very good. Now, it's time for me to dig deep into my bag of happies and say some thank yous. First of all, I'd like to say a very big thank you to all our subscribers. You're helping us to keep making this podcast. Thanks very much to Patreon subscribers Nicole, Elizabeth, Emma, David, Jacob, Anna, Rachel, Jenna, Rihanna, Christopher and Anton. Thanks too to six-year-old Hattie from Portland in Oregon who supports us on Apple. Thanks for sending us an ogre picture, Hattie. And thanks to Kofi supporters Natalie, Laura and Simon who is five from Ontario. And to Joe, who is a big fan of Toop stories. And Tomas, who is six, from Dioch in Cardiff. And Irina. Thank you all for your generous donations. Let us know if you're a subscriber or a Kofi donor and you'd like a mention. And thanks to Madeline in the US for your lovely review on Apple Podcasts. If you'd like to give a one-off donation of any amount on Ko-fi or subscribe to our podcast on Patreon and get bonus stories, early access and advert free, then go to our website on supergreatkidsstories.com or to subscribe on Apple, go to Apple Podcasts. Now, you've all been drawing and sending stupendous pictures of our stories to share on our Facebook page. So here's some thank yous to super great kids who sent in pictures. Thanks to seven-year-old Alice and her sister Beatrice, who is nine, from Finland. They both drew beautiful pictures of the Golden Bowl story while they were on holiday in Spain. Alice, I love your king holding his precious bowl with a big smile on his face and his red cape flowing behind him. And Beatrice, I love the box you've drawn so carefully, which contains the golden bowl. I particularly like the way you've drawn the string so intricately and put a fragile sticker on the box too. Thanks, both of you. And thanks to seven-year-old Wally, who sent a beautifully composed picture of Baba Yaga the Russian witch and her house surrounded by twisty, creepy trees and a fence of scary, glowing skulls. And thanks to Vivian, who is seven, from San Clemente in California. Vivian has drawn a magical picture of the North American story Coyote Makes the Stars. Vivian, I love all the little questions you've drawn coming out of Coyote's mouth and the way you've got him dancing, trying to compete with the bulrushes. Thanks very much for your stylish picture. And Stella has drawn a creative picture of the Haitian story, Buki Dances the Kokioko. Stella, I love the way you've drawn the story like a map, showing the different scenes as they happen. Really clever. Thanks so much for sharing this. And four-year-old Esme from Bangalore in New South Wales has drawn pictures of the African story, Baboon and Tortoise, and also of the Irish story, Eggshell Soup. That's a super great greedy baboon you've drawn scoffing lots of figs while little tortoise waits patiently below. And your fairy changeling from the Irish eggshell soup story is just marvellous with his huge baby face and speech bubble demanding whiskey and tobacco. So pleased you're enjoying the stories. And Dexie, who is seven, also from Bangalore in New South Wales, Australia, has sent two inspiring pictures from the West African story, Tortoise and Sons, and the Native American story, Coyote Makes the Stars. I love the way you've drawn Sky God reaching down out of the sky with his long arm to take the silver disc from Mr. Tortoise. And in your second picture, the way the sky is so big above little Coyote, who is asking for big answers from the sky. 
You've captured the settings really well. Thank you, Dexie. And Tallulah, who is eight and was born in California but has recently moved to Spain, has sent us a lovely picture inspired by the Russian story Baba Yaga the Witch and Vasilisa the Beautiful. It's a super great picture, Tallulah. I particularly like the giant jug pouring rain down on everything. And I really like the little cat sitting on the roof and watching. A great picture for a great story. I hope you're enjoying living in Spain. What an exciting adventure. And Eartha, who is nine, has drawn a very clever cartoon story map of eggshell soup. What a beautiful way to retell this story, Eartha. It's difficult to reduce an entire story to just a few pictures, and you've told it so clearly. I love the mammy all lovey with her baby, and the next minute he's turned into a little green monster. Thank you. I hope you've tried telling the story yourself. And five-year-old twins Clem and Kit have been drawing and imagining. Clem has drawn a great picture of Baba Yaga with her huge mouth of metal teeth and the red ring of skulls around her hut on chicken legs. And Kit has drawn a robot which he can live in forever and one which he can also drive. I really like the spikes on your robot, Kit. I wonder what the inside of a robot looks like. Thank you very much, both of you, for sharing your pictures. And Alice and her sister Clara from Codsell in the UK listen to Super Great Kids stories every night. Alice has drawn a super great picture of the Jamaican story, Nora and the Aki Fruit. Alice, your picture of Nora is so good. I like her boots and her stripy tights and the way you've got the water from the magic river swirling around her. Thank you. And Samson, who is six, drew a picture of the Russian witch Baba Yaga standing in the night sky with the wind rushing towards her. Samson, I love your witch with her red eyes. The wind is my favourite bit. It's got such energy. I think night is where Baba Yaga belongs best, don't you? Thanks so much for sharing your picture with us and I hope you're feeling better now. And Frankie from Portland in Oregon has drawn a wonderful imaginative picture of the Native American story How the Mosquitoes Became, or The Whistling Giants. I love the whistling giants you've drawn with their flaming red hair looking like giant mosquitoes. And the two tiny, not so very brave sisters are shouting ah! at the bottom of the picture. You've conjured up this story beautifully. Thank you, Frankie. That's it for this week. If you'd like to see these pictures, they're all on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash supergreatkidsstories. And thanks to all our subscribers for making this episode possible. Keep telling those stories to anyone who will listen. This podcast was produced at Wardour Studios in London. London.